Okay, I'm here with Nick Willis. Nick, thanks very much for uh, agreeing to uh, come on and do this uh, online recording with me. Uh, we're recording now for the Hutt Valley Harriers um, Centenary Dinner. Uh, you as one of the, um, I guess, uh, highlight athletes of the club over the last 20 years. Uh, it's great to be able to speak with you. And uh, look, we're going to start off uh, maybe hearing a little bit about how you got into uh, joining Hutt Valley Harriers. Hey, thanks, Reese. It's a real honour to be here. Like Hutt Harriers was my first foray into the sort of running fraternity in, in the Wellington area um, with the adults and stuff. So it's it's very formative um, part of my running journey. So it's a, it's a great privilege to be with you, but also with everyone else who's in the room tonight. Yeah, and so you say obviously you joined when you were a youngster. Um, I know you were involved in Colgate Games and stuff, and your family's been involved with the club for years. Um, tell us a little bit about maybe some of those early successes or some of the memories from you as a junior. My first memory of of the Harrier Club, because I was, of course, involved with the Athletics Club, which was a separate entity um, in the summertime, but in the winter, although rugby was sort of the thing that I did and all, all of my mates did as well, Dad would go down on a on a rainy Saturday afternoon for a club run at two o'clock and he'd drag me along sometimes. I'd, I'd show up and maybe I'd head out with like the slow group or whatever for three or four K jog around the, the Hutt Valley. Um, and I was always in awe when I'd see the fast group head out and you'd hear about where they were going. And it was just like blew my mind to think that they were going to head up the Karakara stream and up into the Belmont Regional Park like that stuff that you did on like a school trip that took a whole day. So for people to do that as a run, I, I just, I looked up to these guys as like legends as like all of the, the older guys in, in the Hutt Valley area and probably John O'Wyatt and my brother and some of those guys were the younger ones of that crowd, but something I never thought was possible. Um, And just the hanging around the club rooms, this is when the club rooms was back at the Hutt Rec and the um, Hutt Cricket Club. There and just hanging out and getting a coke afterwards while our adults would have a beer and it was just a, a real friendly atmosphere and my dad seemed to know everybody um but i didn't really own it as my sport it was just a fun sort of community experience to do um and i'd shot to the occasional cross-country race whether it be the wellington cross-country champs the dawn cup or some of the the local club events i think the saunders goff and robbie might have been one of my first races it was like a handicap race down on the hut river um, those are always good fun as well. But I'd show up in my rugby boots after a rugby game and and do a do like the under nines or the under elevens race, something like that. Um, yeah, that was sort of how I got started with the club. It was sort of indirectly through my family. And that's really cool to hear, especially I guess for youngsters coming to the club. That uh, um, any involvement, uh, especially with Hutt Valley Harry, is any involvement that can get you out running. Um, and almost the sky's the limit uh, with your running career, but. Look, you talk about starting off maybe running as a side thing um, with the other sports as priority, but look, we think about where you've got to with your running career. One of the, um, uh, I guess, as, as a New Zealander watching you run at four Olympics, uh, Commonwealth Games, um, New Zealand record holder, sub 330 for the 1500, sub 350 for the mile. Um, these are pretty amazing achievements that I guess we're all familiar with, but are there any achievements that you personally um, uh, kind of are memorable for you uh, alongside those um, accolades that, we've, that I've spoken about? Are there any that stand out um, that might be of um, interest to speak about? I mean, I was a pretty intense kid. Like I took things really seriously com competition wise and running was the thing that I seemed to have the most success at. And I think I put as much expectation and planning and, um, intensity into races I did as a junior as I did any Olympic Games final um, and I had that same sort of like I have to succeed or do well in this race and if I achieved that goal then it, it meant the world to me at that moment I experienced all of the same sort of like euphoria that you would at any of the biggest races in the world um, so I remember some pretty epic battles in the Dawn Cup against Hayden Prosser who became one of my closest friends from the Olympic club. He was the son of the legend Barry Prosser from Olympic. And we were the, I had, I was the younger brother of Steve Willis. And so we had some pretty epic battles and back and forth and I won some, he won some. And that was always cool coming out of Barton's Bush and like turning that final corner. And then you come into the straightaway at Trenton Memorial Park. I think the course might be different now. 
Um, but there definitely was a, a long shoot where the crowd would gather around and you felt pretty special. Like it was like what you envisioned seeing at the Olympics when the marathon would enter into the stadium and get to do that like final sprint to the finish line. That was those are big moments for me as well. And um like going to the North Island cross country champs and Topo were always a big deal. That was probably the hardest course I've ever run on and as always special heading to Taupo anyway for a holiday, right? But to uh, to get to race all of the best runners from around the country and you didn't know any of them, but you had heard like rumors about who these fantastic runners were from Tauranga or from Rotorua or other places and to have some of those epic battles, but to hang out at the motel with the club and you sort of developed friendships with people of multiple generations. Um, I got to experience that as a church goer most of my life, but I think the running club was probably the second best experience in that a lot of youth don't have that opportunity to interact with people of multiple generations, but in the running community is very welcoming from the, the ultra masters runners, like the 80 year olds, right. Um, all the way down to um, those your own age, I think it was a very like welcoming place. And those times hanging out in the um, the motel by the pool or in the hot tub after the races were just as memorable for me as as in the races themselves. It was interesting. I think uh, speaking with Jonathan Wyatt, uh, he also spoke about the memories he had from Dawn Cup uh, and and being a, a Hutt Valley Harriers organised event. I guess it's it's probably nice from, for some of the officials that are watching to hear that uh, an event like that has such good memories for, for you as athletes. Yeah. The Dawn cup was up there with winning any other cross country title, whether it be North islands or a national secondary schools. I didn't actually win national secondary schools, but um, yeah, you had to defend home turf and Trenton Memorial park was sort of that, that space where we played rugby all winter and then got to race cross country on it once or twice a year as well. And um. It was just, it had just all of the different elements that you would want to do. And just as a kid, I remember watching the the seniors head out for the big lap around the big field first, and then they'd come around that hairpin turn around the ditch, and you'd just, you'd see all the old guys with froth coming out the side of their mouth, and Gerard Mahus going, oh, oh, as you're running, and like, it's just it's that stuff of legend when you're a little kid, like seeing all these old guys, there'd be like a pack of 300 people running. There were some pretty big fields back in the day. Um, yeah, it, it really set the stage to, to you put in all of the effort and you get out of it what you put into it. Um, those are definitely formative moments and um, maybe subconscious to what I knew what it, I would need to put into my own sport once I became of age. And uh, look, we know over the, past few years especially with you uh, attending university in america and then obviously being a predominantly international based uh runner um we have seen you come back to new zealand for um series of races or, or individual races here or there we know you really like to support um domestic racing in new zealand and help kind of grow some of the talent that's here um and i'm thinking of events like the jackson street mile and Patoni, and uh, the merrill mile that you've come back for in in wanganui um, and more recently, obviously, international track meet. Um, how do they fit in with you, obviously, when you had an international career, still coming back and competing in those events? Well, first of all, where I live in the States has terrible winters. And so it's always nice to be able to get away to New Zealand where it's summertime. And there's nowhere better than in New Zealand over January when everyone's off of work and it's just a really laid back place. You get to have a it seems like Christmas extends two weeks of having different barbecues and catching up with everyone. And then when there's local races to like cap off a good training block down there um, with all of the local races, that was always fun. Um, as a kid, like I really looked up to my brother watching him race in the smoke free track series and in the Mali games and that stuff sort of pitted out as television interest sort of waned in sponsorship dollars. And so it was sad that I didn't have that opportunity to like to be that sort of example to the, to the younger kids who would have been coming along to watch those meets like I had as a kid. Um, so yeah, it was, it was fun to, to try and create some of those moments. Um, probably not with too much success in terms of generating the same sort of hype that used to attend those sorts of international meetings back in the day. But, um, but yeah, it's still fun to, to attend in Christchurch, especially, 
the the group down there um put together some really fun races and i think the the most enjoyable was at christ college but when there wasn't a track and it was just on this grass um track it might have only been 300 meters long but yeah the the crowd support down there was great and just hanging out with all of the school kids getting autographs afterwards it sort of takes the edge off of the intensity of the sport and just helps you remind me every year i would come home and not only do the races but the training up in the belmont regional park and on the fire breaks above wainui and Mata and stuff like that's where it all started for me and it was a good way to like start my calendar year before i headed off to some of the more international races <clears throat> Look, and you mentioned about that uh, event down at Christ College. Obviously, the lead into that was um, the large earthquake down in Christchurch, which meant that uh, the event was cancelled, uh, I think, in 2011. Um, we had the meet up in Wellington um, and also coincided with, um, and you may, it may not be something that sticks in your head, but uh, it, it, I think in years to come, it might be uh, one of the tougher um, uh, quiz questions that might come up that you're involved with, <laughs> which is uh, what is the only New Zealand, uh, what is the only Olympic medal to be uh, awarded uh, on New Zealand soil? And uh, that was uh, quite a, an event there to be involved in. Um, can you tell us a little bit about just kind of how that unfolded, like with the Christchurch track meet being cancelled and then um, the event that we had up in Wellington? Yeah, it was, it was quite a whirlwind of um series of events that took place. Obviously, you get into crisis mode when something like the earthquake happens and everyone wanted to think, what can we, how can we do our part? And I had some of my um, international training partners down in Wellington training with me at the time. And we were all ready to race down in Christchurch against the Australians. But so we thought, what can we do? Why don't we put together a meet here in Christchurch and um, at Newtown Park in Wellington, sorry. And we reached out to a couple of people, I think yourself and um, Hayden Sherman, who was working with the Red Cross at the time, could they manage sort of the, the donation element of it? And I think in three or four days, we ended up putting together an event that drew over 3,000 people to the crowd and we raised over $25,000. And I remember standing in Lambton Key with my American training partners handing out flyers the day before the race. And the, um, yeah, was, that was really special to like, to realize that the community could get together and rally around the sport. And then I had to actually get on the track and do a race. And it's probably the hardest sub four minute mile I'd done to date at that time. Um, the one last year was much harder though, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, to get yourself emotionally up after like focusing on organizing the event. And then, as you mentioned that time getting on the dais. And I think it's, more special to me was that I got to hear the national anthem played for a silver medal. Normally only the gold medal gets to hear the national anthem, but maybe it was deserved because Kip Rop ended up testing positive later anyway. So I'll take it. Um, but that was really cool to have all my extended family in the crowd, people that weren't able to be there in Beijing at the time. And um, that was a very, very special moment indeed. Uh, so Nick, just kind of giving you an opportunity to um, uh, maybe say a little bit uh, and I'll let you finish up here. Um, it's been really, really great to speak to you, um, hear a little bit about uh, kind of some thoughts from your career. Um, uh, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about kind of where you're at now, maybe the the, the working role that you're in, maybe where your running career kind of is at and, uh, and any last words from you um, to the Hutt Valley Harriers community. Yeah, no, thanks, Reese. Um, I don't really know where I'm at with running at the moment. I've, I've had a bit of a break, a much needed break. I haven't really run with any sort of consistency in the last nine months since my baby was born, and it was my choice. I just haven't felt motivated. So maybe once or twice a week here and there. And but because of that, I've picked up a ton of minor injuries along the way, just because I haven't been taking care of my body or eating healthy or anything like that. But I'd like to get back into shape. Whether I ever race again, I'm not sure. I'm never going to retire officially just because I want to keep that door open. But I did get notice from the um, drug testing authorities last week or two weeks ago that I'm no longer in the testing pool. So that's one less thing I have to worry about um, having to like, update my calendar whereabouts 24 hours a day. I'm 365. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what I do from a running standpoint. Um, but, yeah, I'm enjoying working in the industry still. I work for a running brand that's based out of Boston named Tracksmith and um able to support athletes and community runners and be involved in marathons a lot more than I sort of 
ever understood that side of the sport. So the mass participation events is sort of our sweet spot where we seem to connect culturally with a lot of the, the running community. So if you're ever heading to a, a major marathon around the world, like we'll be there, we'll be setting up some programming for you guys to like experience um, running culture over the whole weekend. And um, hopefully we'll be able to come down to New Zealand and put on some stuff as well in, in, the, in the near future. But I guess I just want to mostly just thank the club for always being there. Like it was a consistent thing every Saturday throughout the winter, two o'clock to four o'clock every Saturday. Um, I wasn't always motivated to to be a runner. I enjoyed playing other sports when I was a teenager, but um, I knew it was always there as a, as a fallback when things may not be going so well or in between seasons or that sort of stuff. And everyone was always so welcoming and it was always such a positive environment. Um so I hope that that continues and there's opportunities for the next generation, whether they're competitive runners or just people that want to enjoy it from a social perspective. It's That's what I enjoyed about it. People just, it was a space that was available for everybody who just loved running and hopefully that continues on for a, another period of time as well. Okay, awesome. Hey, thanks for your time, Nick. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you back, uh, back next time you're back in New Zealand and uh, I'm sure back at the Hutt Valley Harriers Club rooms to say hi to everyone. Thanks, Reese. Thanks, guys. Have a great night.